Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Connie and I'm a furniture painter. And this week's video, I'm going to be painting this with some Dixie Bell products. Now, it looks like it's in fairly good condition. It's pretty solid, it's quite old, it's a really cute little piece, but there has been some chewing action from a puppy. And I was giving this table to see if I could do something with it. One of the legs is worse than the other three, and I have already done some prep work on it because it's kind of been sat at the back of my workshop and I've been kind of been doing it in between other stuff. So I filled the worst holes that were made with sharp little needle teeth, and I've just filled those with Dixie Mud in brown and sanded them back and I'm not going to repair the rest because this is a really old table it's got lots of character already it's got lots of age related marks and dings so instead of covering all that character up I am going to emphasize it and make it into a feature and make it look like a really old piece most people paint their furniture to look new again I'm going to paint this to make it look old So I mentioned I'd done most of the prep work, I'm just going to give it a final wipe down to get rid of any dust on the surface and then I'm going to mix in a an old coffee tin actually this is, I'm going to mix drop cloth, chalk mineral paint and some sea spray and this is going to give me a thick mixture and I'm going to create lots of texture as my base layer with this mixture. And I'm just using a natural bristle brush to stipple that all over the piece. And then for the top, what I like to do is just kind of alternate it slightly. So I don't want as much texture on the top. Obviously, it's going to make it really kind of uneven. And also, any really high peaks in the texture, when I apply the next colour, it's just going to give me kind of a really uniform look, which I don't want. So... What I like to do is get a thingamajig tool, you can also use a scraper or something that's flat like a knife or a palette knife, pretty much anything, you can use a credit card if you wanted to, and I just smooth out the really high peaks in that texture, and this kind of gives a really old, authentic look to that base layer, instead of it just being stippled on and all the texture being really kind of uniform and the same it gives a little bit of variety and like I say it just smooths out those really high peaks and I just think it helps it make it look a little bit more authentic and hopefully this will show you a little bit of a close-up of what I mean so it's just drying you can still see wood coming through but it's just flattened down those really high peaks of texture okay so the crazy phase is on. We might get a little bit crazier, who knows? And the next thing I'm gonna do is put some crackle on. So I haven't used crackle a huge amount and I definitely haven't used it with terror. So this might not work, but you know, we're gonna try it. This is what crackle does. It literally crackles your paint. This is actually chalk mineral paint. So Essentially, you apply your first colour, which is the blue, then you apply your crackle, let it dry, and then you apply your top colour, which in this case is drop cloth, I think this was, and it crackles the paint. So it gives you such a cool effect. So I'm going to use it with Terra. So like I said, I've never used it with Terra before. I know some of the other brand ambassadors have and have had great results, but with everything, you know, it's not always 100% guaranteed something's going to work. So that's the kind of look I'm going to go for because it does give you a really kind of rustic aged effect, which is exactly the look that I want for this. A brand, a brand new tub of Crackle. As always, whoa, as always, when you open a brand new product, always give it a stir. And that goes for products if it's been sat on your shelf, even if it's not brand new. If it's been sat for a while and you haven't used it, always give it a stir because all the heavy ingredients will sink to the bottom of your tub and it may not work to its best potential if those ingredients aren't all stirred together. So this is the consistency of crackle. It's really thick and gloopy. So don't panic if you open your crackle and you think there's something wrong with it. That's how it's meant to look. 
So just make sure your base coat is completely dry. I failed to mention that. So the drop cloth and sea spray base coat has been dried overnight. And I'm just gonna apply the crackle with a chip brush. I started out putting it in just some random areas. And then I thought, because I've never used it with Terra before, I am gonna put it all over because that way at least we're gonna get a little bit of crackle, hopefully, somewhere. So then I just decided to put it all over, top, bottom, sides, and back. And as the crackle was drying, I painted the drawer front in salt water from the silk paint range, just because I'm gonna decoupage that and I always undercoat my decoupage with white and left that to dry. Okay, so the crackle that I put on has been dry for about just under 24 hours because I applied it really thick in areas and it does take a while to dry and it is fairly cold at the moment. So, um, and I'm far too tight to put any kind of heating on. So it's been dry for 24 hours and it is properly dry. As you can see, the color that I'm using is daffodil from the Terra Clay Paint range. Um, which matches nicely with my Crocs. I've already put some on, the sides and the back. I've had some crackling and I've had no crackling. Now, I've been playing around with technique and I think I know where I went wrong because I forgot that you shouldn't back brush with crackle. Um, it's a really easy mistake to make because it's automatic. And what I mean by back brush is when you apply your paint in one direction, you then usually go back and work it in or smooth it out. Now, that's quite hard on things like legs because I automatically do this. Also, I've got quite a lot of texture going on this table. So trying to work it into the texture without back brushing is quite hard. So what I found works best is water because terra clay paint is super thick. And what I want to do is just get it all in the texture. So I'm going to put a little bit of water on the surface first. I've also dampen my brush slightly um, so that it sort of loosens the paint up a little bit and it's not quite so thick. So where I've just applied it on here, there is some crackling and I did that exact technique. So fingers crossed, we'll get a little bit of crackling on the front and we're definitely gonna get some on the top because it's gonna be super easy to just keep the brush, my leg looks, my leg looks broken. It's gonna be really easy to keep the brush going in one direction. So let's just see what happens. So like I say, I am spritzing the surface and then I am just laying the paint on in one direction. Let's see how many times you count me back brushing. It did happen and I knew I was doing it as I was doing it, but it's just so automatic. So I'm just really trying to keep all my brush strokes in one direction and not back brush, but it was almost impossible on the legs it's a lot easier on a flatter surface. So if you wanna try crackle out for the first time, I would suggest doing it on a flat area to start off with because it's just habit to back brush. And like I say, especially when you've got texture or any intricate detail, you just wanna get the brush in there and back brush and that basically stops the crackle from working. The good thing about Terra is that it's super pigmented, so I only needed one coat of daffodil to give complete coverage. Okay, so I am gonna put the heating on. I'm gonna put the heater on um, because I am very impatient and I wanna see if this crackles. So I'm gonna whack the heating on and then in the meantime, I'm gonna choose some decoupage paper to decoupage the little drawer. Okay, so, oh, you can just see my cheeky crock there, bottom of the screen. I think I found the perfect decoupage paper. I have got a huge collection of mainly paper napkins, but also wrapping paper, tissue paper, place, things that I've just picked up over the years from different places. I've got this one, and it's kind of folky, and it's got yellow in it, which is perfect, and it's also got quite a lot of blue, which is yellow's complementary colour, they're opposites. So I think that is gonna work quite well. I'm gonna whack it on and see what it looks like, because I can always sand it off. The question people ask me the most about paper napkins is where do I get them from? Um, pretty much anywhere. eBay, Etsy, supermarkets, shops. Just if I see them, and they're a cool design, I normally pick them up, and they're dead cheap. 
and then I put them in the box for a day where I'll need it, like this. This is the day for this one. So I've got my satin clear coat. This is what I'm gonna stick it on with and seal it with. I've got a little brush and I've got my paper napkin. So the most common thing that people make a mistake with with napkins is just sticking it on as it is. What you need to do is separate the different sheets so that's gonna make it thinner and that kind of melts into the paint better. So some paper napkins are two ply, some are three. This is, whoops, this is, this is three. And what that means is it's got three layers. So you've got the first layer, which is that one. I think it's three, yeah. You've got the first layer, which is that one. Don't need that. You've got the second layer, which is that one. Now this might have and very often does have a very, very faint version of the paint of the pattern. I don't know if you can pick it up on camera. You can a little bit. Sometimes that looks really cool. If you want a really nice kind of faded vintage distress look, you can actually use that. So what I do is fold it and pop it back in the stash, just in case I ever want to use it for that. But we're gonna go bright and bold with this one. So that's just left me with a very very thin sheet you can see my hand through it and now can you see why i undercoat everything that i'm decoupaging in white if that was wood or yellow or any other color the colors of the paper napkin would take on what was underneath um and then they wouldn't be that nice kind of bright color so that's why i always undercoat in white as I mentioned, I'm gonna use satin clear coat to stick the napkin. And you wanna make sure you get all the edges and corners and you want a thin layer, more than you'd use if you were using it for a top coat, but not enough that it's dripping off the piece. Because the more, basically the more top coat that you use or glue or adhesive, the more likely it is to get wrinkles. So I am placing the napkin on and then with really feather light strokes because you don't want the napkin to rip, I'm just going to lightly press over with my brush and add another layer of top coat to seal. That's on and I'm going to leave it now. The heater is on. I'm going to leave that to dry before I trim it because if you trim it before, I mean you could cut the excess off so it's not hanging down, um, but if I wanted to trim the edges before it was dried, it's more, well, it's very, very likely to rip. So I am gonna wait for it to completely dry. I'm gonna put the heater a little bit closer um, and go and do something else. And then hopefully I'll come back. It started to crackle. The decoupage will be dry. Um, and we can do the next step. Once it's completely dry, the easiest way to trim around the edges and get a nice line is to use a sanding sponge, just rub away at the edges until the napkin tears and that'll give you a nice line. So the table has crackled in some areas and not others, but that's okay, we can work with it. And I'm gonna go ahead and distress it now. The top is actually still drying because I did apply it really thickly. So I'm gonna let that dry a little bit and I'll distress the rest of it. And then we can get it finished off. For this look, I'm not gonna go too chippy um, as my sort of previous video was, was a mega chippy finish. For this one, I'm just gonna lightly distress it in keeping with the kind of rustic look of the piece. So I'm gonna concentrate on the legs because that's where would get kind of knocked and bumped. And I'm just distressing it back so that I can see some of the base color in areas and some of the dark wood in other areas. For the top, I'm just gonna use a sanding sponge and just give it a nice sand so that it's physically smooth to the touch. Obviously, this table, I want people to be able to use it, so I don't want it really lumpy and bumpy. I'm just gonna make sure it's all nice and smooth and that will expose kind of some of the bits of wood and also some of the base color. And then to seal it, I'm gonna use Terra Tough. And as I apply it, you can see the color changing back to the kind of vibrancy it was when the paint was wet. I use two coats of Terra Tough and I'm also gonna go over the draw front that I decoupaged just because that's gonna give it the same sheen level as the rest of the table. As with all top coats, it's best to try and do two or three thin coats as opposed to one thick one. And finally, I'm gonna add some brown wax and this is just gonna help age the table 
give it a little bit more kind of authenticity and it also helps give some dimension especially because I've got quite a lot of detail going on around the legs so I'm using a chip brush here which is a flat natural bristle brush and I'm using it in kind of sideways motions around the leg detail so I'm not putting it all over I'm only going in the sort of recessed areas so when I'm creating shading, what I want to do is add dark areas, a little bit like a shadow, in the sort of creases or detail. And then the areas that are more flat, you kind of want to blend it out into those areas. And because I've already applied clear coat, which is completely dried now, I don't need to do anything with clear wax because that clear coat is going to act as a barrier between the paint and the coloured wax which means I'm gonna get really good control over it when I wanna wipe it back. So I'm only using a little bit of product because obviously it's yellow and brown wax is quite a big contrast. So I don't need a lot of product. And all I'm doing is putting a little bit of product on my brush and putting the majority of that product in the corners and recesses. And then without adding any more wax onto my brush, I'm just blending it out into the sort of center of that little bit of detail. So. I don't get any kind of harsh lines. So as you can see, I'm going round the leg in a sort of sideways motion. And then I'm just taking that without putting any more wax on my brush. I'm taking that out into the more raised section and that gives it a little bit more dimension. So once I've got the wax on and I'm kind of happy with the placement, I just use a shop cloth or you can use a microfiber cloth or anything that's basically lint free. An old t-shirt is a good one as well. And then I'm just going to remove the excess and slowly blend that out. So I'm starting in the center where there's the least wax and then just rubbing it in kind of circular motions. So the center of each kind of small section if you like. That way you're not dragging the brown wax onto where you kind of want more of a sort of pure yellow colour and that again it just adds to that kind of three-dimensional look. What you're also doing when you buff it off as well is removing any excess and stopping it feeling tacky and giving it a nice sheen. So that's how I do the legs. When I'm doing a more sort of flatter open space again I'm going to create a frame so I'm just putting a bit of brown wax on my brush and taking that all the way around the edge with the most amount of product and then again blending it out into the center to give that more of a kind of soft line you can see how easy that was just to create dimension on that one little bit again taking a little bit of wax on my brush and just creating a frame so taking the most amount of products and putting it in the edges and then dragging it towards the center and again just diffusing that line with a shot cloth to take the excess off Okay, tops. Tops are something people always struggle with because it is such a big expanse of kind of a flat surface. So again, I'm gonna use the same kind of process, taking the most amount of product on my brush and framing the top, and then taking that, basically that harsh line, that edge, and that excess product, and then working it into the center really slowly, not adding any more product on my brush. There's enough on there to kind of do what I need it to do. That just means you're not going to leave the top without any brown wax it's going to tie it in but you're not going too heavy with the product either and again taking the shot cloth working in the center first and then diffusing that line out so it kind of softens the line and you don't get any kind of product build up in the center where you don't want it and it just gives a nice kind of frame to the top without going overboard and just finishing touches now, the drawer interior was a little bit stained with ink stains and it was looking a little bit sorry for itself. So in keeping with the kind of colourful vibe and also to tie in with the colours on the decoupage drawer, I decided on using cobalt blue for the drawer interior. This is the brightest, zingiest blue in the world and it's just going to contrast really nicely against the yellow. And as I mentioned, here's some close-ups of the crackle. It did work in areas. There's a little bit more. I think it looks really authentic. And here's how the table finished up and the final shot. Thank you for watching. As always, hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Bye.